international roaming for me is a question of the, the, if there's more competition, that's going to come down pretty quickly um, because it is a bit of a shock for people when they go outside the country. It has to be addressed and I don't think anyone globally has kind of got it right yet because there's this drug of this nice revenue it's a real dilemma. I think the, the players once again it's good it protects revenue. More likely the probably the underlying reason is that the networks can't actually handle a lot of international load and really it, it's throttling that, um, that usage before you actually get into it. I now use Skype on my smartphone and I get I get a fraction. I you know I, I actually get a better price when I'm offshore than I do in locally now. Some of the technologies and applications that are out there now, including some of the ones we're looking to release, uh, will get around the voice roaming charges by using the data side. However, that's still expensive. Data roaming is probably the biggest. If you have a, a email device of some kind or an iPhone that's attached to the internet somewhere, that's going to be very expensive. Switch off data roaming so they don't get bill shock or pick up a SIM card in the country you're in and put that into your phone. Um, you know, it's very easy to pick up Wi-Fi on different handsets now and do your data via Wi-Fi as opposed to roaming. It's tough because it's um, you know for a network provider to be able to provide those the, the infrastructure for that, uh, it's harder to plan because you don't know what, how many people are coming in. So it's not so much about screwing the customer for large prices, it's about controlling the usage of the network. I think that's the underlying reason which a lot of people don't actually realise. I'll have to find a way because I don't have to use the roaming charges for data or voice. And this comes down to how smart the developers are in the open source world to get around the traditional telco boundaries.